Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 20, part B, we're going to learn how to read a preamp schematic using my 6 or 12 SN7 preamp as an example. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. In tube lab number 19, we took a first look at my prototype dual mono 6 or 12 SN7 line preamp. This week we're going to go over the schematic in, de in detail. Now this is designed as a 101 class, so if you're an old hand, the schematic is now available as a free download. Just go to the store homepage, top right, under information, downloads, and I'll put a link below as well. And of course there's always a link to the store down below. And you can just skip to the very end of the video and we're going to take a look at a, a bunch of tubes that came in. Okay, I've broken the video into two parts. Part A will look at the preamp power supply, and this part, part B, will look at the preamp circuit. Let's jump in and I'll show you how easy it is to read one of these things. Okay, so in the last episode we we made a nice clean B plus at approximately 250 volts DC. So that, there we're coming in and down here is our B minus or our ground connection and that's where the other leg goes to. We come along here, this is the power rail or the B plus or the positive rail and we land right on top of an electrolytic capacitor. What the heck is that doing there? That looks like a filter capacitor and that's exactly what it is. It's 33 microfarad, 350 volts. Electrolytics are oriented so the positive side has to stay on the positive side of the circuit. The negative side goes all the way down and around to ground. And what that does is a late stage filter and that'll help clean up the B plus just before we go on to the, the plate of our, of our gain stage. Okay, so we drop down into what's called a plate resistor, 47K, 47,000 ohms, 2 watt, onto pin 2. Now this is the properly called the anode but everyone calls it the plate, and the reason for that is years ago, at the very beginning of tubes, the anode was just a little square piece of metal, and people started calling it the plate, and it's just stuck with us, and of course we draw it as a plate as well. Next we've got pin 1, which is the grid, and then we've got pin 3, which is the cathode. Now this tube is, this side of the tube is cathode biased, so this is a cathode resistor down here, 1K5, which means 1.5K, half watt. Now let's start at the beginning of the audio. The audio comes in on an RCA over here. There's a shield on the outer side of the plug, and that goes straight to ground. From there it goes into a resistor with this little arrow pointing down the middle of it sure looks like a variable resistor and that's exactly what it is. It's a 100k potentiometer or pot for short. It's an audio taper. That's just how the volume rises as you turn up the volume. It's more um, in line with how we hear sound. A linear pot would go up in even gradients whereas the audio taper doesn't. It goes up differently. Okay, I think I've got one right here. Get that off. This is a, a Blue Alps. They're beautiful pots. And this is actually a dual gang or a stereo pot, a 100K. And what you've got is basically two variable resistors in the same package. And one channel comes onto this set of pins, one channel comes onto that set. And when you turn up the volume, the both there's two wipers. Both wipers move simultaneously in balance. Neat, huh? Okay, so that's our volume control. 
Next we come into a 0.1 microfarad 400 volt coupling capacitor. And what this does is it allows the AC coming in to pass through, but it blocks any DC that's on this circuit. We don't want high voltage DC to accidentally get onto the grid here. Not here. I actually have a couple of these lying around. Let's just take a look at them. It's hard to see the print. These are Vichets. They're good quality um, MPET capacitors, which just means they're metallized polyester film. And they're affordable. They're a nice small package. There we go. And uh, they're really good quality. They're good for, they're good for, um, for audio. Now, you can get fancier, fancier capacitors for these applications that are much larger and a lot more expensive. Now, you might notice that there's no band on these things. And the reason for that is there's no polarity. They can go in this way in the circuit or they can go in this way. doesn't matter at all. I just orient them so that the print's up so that I can see the value when I check my circuit. That's about it. Okay. Next you might see what it looks like a sine wave. And that's exactly what it is. It's doing two things. One, it's showing us that the audio signal is on this line right here. And two, it's showing us the phase. And we just stop, start with an, a nominal positive and negative phase. We have a one meg half watt going to ground here. And then we're on the tube on pin one on the grid. Now, when I first started into the tubes, how these tubes worked is a mystery. And I'm going to try to explain this in layman terms. I'm not an engineer. Um, so hopefully I can get this across to you so that you can understand a little bit. What happens here is this heater is actually right underneath the cathode. When you turn the heater on and get the cathode nice and hot, you start to boil off electrons. This is negative. The plate is positive. So we get a large stream of electrons flowing from the negative side to the positive side. Remember, we're inside a vacuum here. And when we put the AC signal, the audio signal, onto the grid, that actually influences the flow of electrons. It modulates them. And up here on our high voltage, on our DC, we see the AC signal appear. Neat, eh? Now, that's as good as I can explain it. Now, here's another one of those symbols. Take a look at this. Here we started off in the positive phase. And here we're on the negative cycle of the sine wave. What the heck's up with that? Well, every time you pass a signal through the tube and take it off the plate, the phase inverts. Huh? Yep. And if you want to know the importance of inverting the phase, just take one of your connections to your speakers and reverse them. Now, not any fancy, fancy speakers, just your regular speakers. And sit down and listen to the bass. The bass will be absolutely gone, at, and you'll be cancelling out all kinds of frequencies. So what you want is you want both your channels to be in phase. So so long as you don't do something strange like have an extra stage on one channel and not on the other, your phase will always be in sync. Okay, so this is a very interesting coupling. We're, we're taking the signal off of the plate, that's very normal. We're bringing it on to the second part of our 6SN7. You see how this is drawn? That's the, that's the gain stage, or the first half of the 6SN7. This is the second half. Remember, this is a, a twin triode in one package, so two tubes inside one envelope. And by drawing it like this, it's pretty clear that that's how it is. Now, often today, you'll find it drawn completely differently. You'll find a full circle, 
and a full circle, and that will be connected up with various connections, like we're seeing here. And what that really is, is two full tubes that are part of the same tube. I prefer this, it's clear. Now, what is different about this connection is that it's a it's a it's a direct DC connection onto the grid of the next stage onto the cathode follower. Normally you would have a coupling capacitor here, but by building the circuit and designing it like this and doing a direct coupling, you eliminate a you eliminate a coupling capacitor. And there's a school of thought in high-end audio, the fewer capacitors in the circuit, the better. Because every one of these suckers influences the sound, and every one of them deteriorates the sound. There's no such thing as adding more capacitors and improving the sound in the audio circuit. So we direct couple to pin 4 of the grid of our cathode follower. Remember, this is the gain stage and it's got high impedance. To drive the next stage, we want low impedance out. So the B plus goes straight onto the plate. What the heck's with that? We've got a dropping resistor here and none over here. Well, take a look at the bottom. 47K, 47K. Basically, this circuit is an inversion of this circuit. And here we go. We've got the cathode here. By taking our audio off of the cathode, we don't get any gain from the circuit, but what we do is we change the impedance dramatically and we lower it significantly. Here we go, we come through another coupling capacitor, 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt, and again we can see a symbol telling us that there's audio, AC, remember that our audio is AC, our power is DC, and look at our phase. We're in phase with this stage. And the reason for that is that when we take the signal off of the plate, we always invert the phase. But when we take it off the cathode, we keep the phase of the previous stage. It stays the same. And I managed to screw this up three different ways. It was just insane. And I think part of the problem is when you're drawing a schematic, you're not actually designing. You're focusing on trying to get your your, your sine wave looking really pretty. <laughs> this is all hand-drawn, folks. No CAD for me. I've tried to use CAD. I tried to use CAD 35 years ago. I tried to use it last week. And it my brain just doesn't work in CAD for some reason. I have no idea why. But I took drafting in high school, and it served me really well. And in the time that I I uh, fooled around trying to get a CAD program working again, I actually drew two drawings. So anyways, so there we go. Our audio signal comes off the cathode. We have a 100K half watt resistor to ground, and there we're going out to the RCA. The shield goes to ground, and the center pin is out. And that is, that's the whole preamp. Now, uh, before I forget, Let's just take a look at what's called the title box. These are really important. They tell us a bunch of things. They tell us what the schematic or drawing is. They give credit to whoever designed it or did the initial work on it. The modifications here are also credited. In this case, I took an existing um, circuit. I made um, quite a few modifications to it, and I designed an entire power supply for it. Who drew it? The date. But here's the most important part. What are the revisions? A week ago we were at zero, and over the last couple of days we're up to revision three. And I'll just show you a couple. None of them are directly circuit related. As you know, I said I screwed up the phases a couple of different times. This I actually didn't know. I didn't know that taking the signal off the cathode kept the previous phase. Um, but I did know that every time we go through the plate of a tube that we flip the phase. 
So you learn something when you do these things. But other than that, um, I added some tube recommendations, what not to use and what to use. Oh yeah, and down here, before I forget, most of these schematics will not include the heater. They just presume you know what the heck they are, where they go, and how you run them. But because this is for beginners, I've drawn the whole thing. So pin 7 and 8 is the heater, cathode heater. And because we want to be able to switch easily between 6SN7s and 12SN7s, we're going to use two switch mode power supplies. In short, we call them SMPSs, or power bricks, or power blocks, same thing. And we need a nominal 6 or 12 volts. So what we ended up with is I found a 7 volt DC power supply, a half ohm dropping resistor will get me right down from 7 to 6.3. Now our target is 6.3 and 12.6, but you don't have to be exact. 6.0 to 6.6 .6 volts DC or AC, if you're wiring these from the transformer, will work just fine. 1.2 amps is the minimum. Remember, we've got two of these circuits, so two of these tubes. And 12.0 to 12.9 volts DC at 0 0.6 amps. And this, again, this could have been AC as well if you're wiring your heaters off of the transformer. The SMPSs, the, the power, power bricks, they're all outputting DC. And I like DC on a preamp because they tend to be less noisy when you have a, a fairly high gain circuit. So you'll pick up less noise into the audio chain than an AC. ACs, AC filaments, well implemented, it will work just fine as well. Okay, well that was fun. And if you've, if you've stayed to the end, let's take a look at some really nice tubes that came in this week. Now in the last video, we looked at a really gorgeous number 45, and look at that. National Union, Fort National Union made tubes way, way back in the day, number 45, looks in really good shape. There's a whole pile of them that came in from a wholesaler I deal with quite often. And these are direct heated triodes. We talked about that in the previous video, so I'm not going to go over that again. Basically, they're a four pin tube. And instead of a separate heater connection, the cathode and the heater are combined in one, one pair of pins. Oh, what else came in? Oh, look at this. Look at the size of that. Let's back up for this box. That is an Electro Harmonix 300B Gold, directly heated power triode. Now, I normally deal in vintage power tubes. But every once in a while, a nice tube will come along that's brand new in the box, new old stock, new in the box, at a good price, and I'll buy them and put them in the store. And this is, in fact, the reproduction of a really old tube design that people just absolutely love. These boxes are really nicely made. They're simple, straightforward to get the job done. See how it's cradled in there? Get it out carefully without dropping it. See the cradle down there? Perfect. Take a look at that. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Look at that top. Isn't that gorgeous? And these are dated 1101. Now, Russian tubes tend to put the year first. That's probably 2011, and the 01 is either the first week of 2011 or the first month. I would need to see some more tubes, uh, a tube particularly with the past the digit 12, to know for sure if that's the way it's been done. And just, I'll bring you up really close to look at that. Look at the size of that plate on this thing. People who are into single-ended, um, directly heated triodes, just love these tubes. Okay, well, if you stay to the end, Here's some discount codes you can use. Remember, I do $20 flat rate global shipping. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me. Stay safe, everyone. 
This is Jim from Valsamore signing off. Cheers, everyone.